Hello and welcome to this lesson on harmonics, which is part of the wave topic in AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at explaining the formation of harmonics. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the formation of a stationary wave by two waves of the same frequency traveling in opposite directions, describe stationary waves in terms of harmonics, and explain graphically how stationary waves are formed. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at 3.3.1.3 three the principle of superposition of waves and the formation of stationary waves now as we mentioned before stationary waves are not formed at all frequencies stationary waves only form at exact resonance frequencies now the resonance frequencies occur when an exact number of half wavelengths fit on the string that the stationary wave is produced on now these frequencies of, of resonant frequencies are also called harmonics so as we look here the first harmonic is when the wave wave is vibrating at its lowest possible resonant frequency. Now you'll notice in the first harmonic it has one loop with a node at each end and one half wavelength fits along the entire string so therefore we can say that the wavelength is double the length of the string that the standard wave is formed on. So we can say that for our first harmonic our frequency will define as F0 the um, first harmonic frequency. We know that the length is equal to uh, the wave length divided by 2 and then conversely therefore the wavelength of the wave is equal to 2 times by the length of the string. Now the second harmonic is twice the frequency of the first harmonic. Now you'll notice with the second harmonic that there are two loops with a node in the middle and one at each end. So there are two half wavelengths fitting on this string so therefore we can say that the wavelength of our stationary wave is the length of the string that it's formed on. So once again we can say that the frequency is two times the frequency of the first harmonic, that the length of the string is the equal to the wavelength and the Conversely, the wavelength is equal to the length of the string. Now the third harmonic is three times the frequency of the first harmonic and you'll notice by looking at this diagram that there are one and a half wavelengths on the string. So again how we can link this in is we can say that the frequency of the third harmonic is three times the frequency of the first harmonic, that the length of the string is one and a half wavelengths and therefore the wavelength of the string is two thirds the length of the string. Now it's important to note that you can have as many harmonics as you like like the 4th, the 5th, the 6th, the 25th harmonic, and the frequency of any harmonic must be a multiple of the first harmonic's frequency. Now the properties of harmonics have the following pattern. So for the nth harmonic, we can say that the number of nodes on our uh, standing wave is going to be the n number plus 1 we can say that the number of antinodes is going to equal to the nth number. That the frequency of this nth harmonic is n times by the frequency of the first harmonic, and that the length is equal to n divided by 2 times by the wavelength, and therefore the wavelength is equal to 2 times by the length of the string over n. Now this information can be used to sketch the stationary wave pattern of any harmonic that you want. So so let's take for example the sixth harmonic with a frequency of the first harmonic of 20 hertz. So how many nodes would you have on the sixth harmonic? Well it would be 6 plus 1 which equals 7. How many antinodes would you have for your sixth harmonic? You would have 6. What would the frequency be where the sixth harmonic forms? Well it's 6 times by the frequency of the first harmonic which in this case is 20 so we say it's 120 hertz. What is the length of our string going to be? Well it's 6 over 2 times by the wavelength so therefore the length of the string will contain three wavelengths and then what's the wavelength going to be well it's going to be two lengths of the string over six so therefore it's going to be the length of the string divided by three now you can produce stationary waves by reflecting a microwave beam at a metal plate so the superposition of the wave and its reflection will produce a stationary wave so when the microwave hits our metal plate it will reflect off that metal plate the two progressive waves will then superpose with each other and produce a stationary wave now you can then find the nodes and the antinodes by moving a probe or a receiver between the transmitter and the reflectant plate now the probe would receive no signal 
signal at the nodes and a maximum signal at the antinodes. Now, powder in a tube of air can produce stationary sound waves. So what you can do is get a loudspeaker to produce a progressive sound wave in a tube. It will then hit the end of the tube, reflect back off that end, and therefore the two progressive sound waves will superimpose, and therefore you will get your stationary sound wave. Now, if you place powder in this tube, okay, it will be shaken away from the antinodes, but then left undisturbed at the nodes. Now, it's also important to note that there are a number of factors that affect the resonance frequencies that can be produced on a string. Now, these include the length of the string, the mass per unit length of the string, and the tension of the string. So we know that the longer the string, the lower the resonant frequency produced because the half wavelength needed is going to be longer. We know that the more the mass per unit length, the lower the resonant frequency is going to be because the wave will travel more slowly down the string because the string is heavier. And then finally, we know that the lower the tension on the string, the lower the resonant frequency will be. This is because the wave will again travel more slowly down a looser string than it would do a tighter string, so therefore it won't travel as quickly. Now, we can then link these, these factors into one equation, which is F is equal to 1 over 2 times by L multiplied by T over uh, mu as such. My apologies there, I missed out the square root. So once again, F is equal to 1 over 2 times by the length multiplied by the square root of t over mu. Now, what do all the symbols mean in this case? Well, in this case, the first thing we know is that f is the resonant frequency of the first harmonic in hertz. L is the length of the vibrating string in meters. We know that T is the tension the string is under in newtons. And then finally, mu is the mass per unit length of the string in kilograms per meter. So what we can say from this particular equation, which is F is equal to 1 over 2 times by L or multiplied by the square root of T over mu, is that we can say the longer the string length, the lower the resonant frequency. We can also say that the higher the mass per unit length, the lower the resonant frequency. And we can also say that the larger the tension of the string, the higher the resonant frequency. So to summarize what we've looked at in today's lesson, we've looked at stationary waves. We've looked at nodes and antinodes on strings. We've looked at the equation F is equal to one over two L multiplied by the square root of T over mu, which gives you the fre frequency for the first harmonic. That the formation of stationary waves are formed by two waves of the same frequency travel in opposite directions. A graphical explanation of the formation of stationary waves. We know that stationary waves formed on a string and those produced by microwaves and sound waves are considered and that stationary waves on strings can be de described in terms of, harm of harmonics where we're looking at the first harmonic and then all, uh, all harmonics above that. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we can describe the formation of a stationary wave by two waves of the same frequency traveling in opposite directions. We can describe stationary waves in terms of harmonics and we can explain graphically how stationary waves are formed. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on harmonics which is part of the waves topic for AQAA level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.